On February 12, 1809, Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States, was born near Hodgenville, Kentucky. When he was seven years old, his family relocated to Indiana, where he grew up on the edge of the frontier. He had little formal education, but when he wasn't working on his father's farm, he read voraciously. A boyhood buddy remembers Lincoln's manic intellect and seeing him late at night, red-eyed and tousle-haired, poring over books. He walked home from New Orleans, Louisiana, in 1828, at the age of 19, after accompanying a produce-laden flatboat down the Mississippi River, his first visit to a large metropolis. Lincoln's father moved the family to Illinois two years later to avoid health and financial problems. After leaving home, Lincoln co-owned a general shop for a few years before selling his share and volunteering as a militia captain in the Black Hawk War of 1832, defending Illinois. Black Hawk, a sock chief, believed he had been duped in a recent property exchange and set out to reclaim his ancestral lands. During the brief struggle, Lincoln did not experience any direct combat, but the sight of corpse-strewn battlefields at Stillman's Run and Kellogg's Grove had a profound effect on him. He earned a reputation as a captain for practicality and honesty. When confronted with a rail fence during practice maneuvers, he merely ordered his soldiers to fall out and regroup on the other side a minute later, neglecting the parade ground instructions to guide them over it. He also intervened when his men were about to execute a wandering Native American as a spy. Lincoln is supposed to have challenged his troops to a fight for the life of the scared Native by stepping in front of their lifted muskets. His men stood down. He studied law after the war and ran for a seat in the Illinois State Legislature. Despite not being elected on his first attempt, Lincoln persisted and was elected as a Whig in 1834. Abraham Lincoln met Mary Todd while working as a lawyer in Springfield, Illinois. Over her family's concerns, they married in 1842 and had four boys. Only one of them grew up to be an adult. In some ways, the Lincoln family's deep sorrow, with periodic diversions into utter madness, sprang from their close association with death. After serving in Congress for one term from 1847 to 1849, Lincoln focused on his all-encompassing law business in the early 1850s. In 1856, he became a member of the newly formed Republican Party, which sparked a debate over sectionalism. In 1858, a series of tense confrontations over slavery and its place in the United States with Stephen A. Douglas, the sponsor of the 1854 Kansas-Nebraska Act, established Lincoln's place in national politics. Lincoln's anti-slavery agenda infuriated Southerners, and his candidacy for president in 1860 enraged them even more. Lincoln won the presidential election on November 6, 1860, without the support of a single Southern state. Secession talk, which had been circulating since the 1830s, took on a more serious tone. Although Lincoln's election did not spark the civil conflict altogether, it was one of the key reasons the war broke out the next year. Lincoln's choice to fight rather than allow the southern states to separate was not motivated by anti-slavery sentiments. He believed it was his sacred duty as President of the United States to keep the Union together at any costs. His first inaugural address was a call to the rebellious states to rejoin the Union, seven of which had already seceded. His first draft of the speech ended with an ominous message, shall it be peace, or the sword? On April 12, 1861, the Confederate attack of Fort Sumter, South Carolina, initiated the Civil War. Fort Sumter was a Union outpost in newly seceded Confederate territory, located in Charleston Harbor. When Lincoln learned that the fort was running low on supplies, he dispatched reinforcements. The supply convoy was intercepted by the Southern Navy. Following this defeat, the Southern Navy fired the first shot of the war at Fort Sumter, and after a 34-hour battle, the Federal defenders surrendered. Lincoln struggled to find effective generals for his forces throughout the conflict. He legally possessed the highest position in the U.S. Armed Services as Commander-in-Chief, and he diligently exercised his authority through strategic planning, weapon testing, and officer promotion and demotion. All of these men and more withered under Lincoln's watchful eye as they failed to bring him victory on the battlefield. McDowell, Fremont, McClellan, Pope, McClellan again, Bewley, Burnside, Rosecrans, all of these men and more withered under Lincoln's watchful eye as they failed to bring him victory on the battlefield. After the Union victory at the Battle of Antietam, Lincoln did not issue his famous Emancipation Proclamation until January 1, 1863. Only slaves in southern states where Lincoln's armies had no control were released under the Emancipation Proclamation, which was legally predicated on the President's ability to seize the property of individuals in rebellion against the state. Nonetheless, it shifted the tone of the war, 
making it a fight for both the Union and the abolition of slavery from the Northern perspective. Lincoln ran for president again in 1864. He was afraid he wouldn't be able to win after years of fighting. The efforts of Ulysses S. Grant, the calm general now in command of all Union soldiers, began to bear fruit only in the last months of the campaign. Lincoln's ticket was buoyed by a series of uplifting triumphs, which helped him win re-election. On March 4, 1865, he gave his second inaugural speech, in which he established the tone for how he wanted the war to finish. His one goal, he said, was lasting peace among ourselves. He called for malice towards none and charity for all. The war ended only a month later. Although the Civil War's repercussions could still be felt in a number of policies, the Lincoln administration did more than just manage it. The Revenue Act of 1862 created the first income tax in the United States, primarily to cover the costs of the war. The Morrill Act of 1862 provided the foundation for the country's state university system, while the Homestead Act of 1862 encouraged colonization of the West by providing settlers with 160 acres of free land. In addition, Lincoln established the Department of Agriculture and the Thanksgiving holiday. On the international stage, he handled the Tran Affair, a diplomatic issue involving the detention of a British ship transporting Confederate envoys, in such a way as to defuse saber rattling overtures from both Britain and the United States. Lincoln curtailed the civil freedoms of due process and freedom of the press as a result of the war. Abraham Lincoln was assassinated by Confederate sympathizer John Wilkes Booth on April 14, 1865, while watching a performance at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. The killing was part of a larger scheme to destabilize the Northern government, which also resulted in the death of Secretary of State William Seward. The following day, Lincoln died, taking with him the promise of rebuilding the country without bitterness.